Hey, my name's Chloe and welcome to Euphoric Escapes. I'm so excited to bring this video here for you guys. I have been meaning to start a YouTube for so long and I didn't just want to make this just to tell people about my experience, but to help anyone else out in the same situation and boat as me because I know I could have done with this help myself. It all started back in November when I came back from my job in Paris and I knew I wanted to work away again. But the only issue in my way was the UK lockdown and all of the restrictions. I always knew that I wanted to go to Australia and it had always been somewhere that I knew I wanted to work one day. So with everything that was going on in the UK, the only way out of it was if you were trying to return back to your own country. So seeing as I had Australian citizenship, from descent since my mum was born here, I was possible to do that. But there was a couple of things standing in my way. Obviously the flights were an extortionate amount of money, like triple the price as usual, or they weren't for like another six to nine months time. So I really didn't know what to do. I spoke to a couple of Australian people that I knew here and they kind of said sign up to DFAT, which is the flight assist, the government trying to help people get back here. And that's what I did. And I think after, about a month and a half, I finally managed to get a flight and I was so, so lucky because some of the people that I've spoke to are here now, they've been trying for like a year, even more than that sometimes. So I am very grateful that, that I managed to get that and I missed about three different flight notifications by the time I actually managed to get one. And I would say be prepared. If you're trying to get to Australia, be prepared on your phone every day because they come at random times. Most of the time they came between half six in the morning and nine. So you kind of have to be ready. Sometimes I'd be in there like half an hour too late and the tickets were all sold out and the only ones left were first class, which I don't have that money right now. So once you have your flight booked and everything, DFAT will send you all of the information through and let you know of all the relevant documentation you have to fill out pre-departure. So the big thing that you have to do before you go is get a PCR test. And the only problem with this is it's only offered in a few locations around the UK. I had to go up to London for mine just for the day. So it can be a bit of a pain, but it's super quick, super easy. Providing that you haven't been out and you've stuck to the restrictions, you should be fine and you shouldn't have to worry about it. It was my 21st birthday last night. Hence the reason I'm looking so scruffy. But I've just arrived here in London. But one good thing about these flights is that they are 100% refundable. So if you're not able to get on the flight for any reason, if you test positive, you can get a full refund from the flight company, which is usually Qantas. When you get to the airport, you meet everyone in the same group as you on your flight and you just get ready, queue up and get your temperature taken as an extra precaution. And that looks like this. So on all of our booking confirmation, it said on the flight you won't get any in-flight entertainment or any in-flight food, which I understand is fair enough. So before I got on my flight, I went to Pret and bought a whole load of food and, and he eaten loads of breakfast. By the time we got on the plane, we had a full breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. I was absolutely stuffed, but there was still no in-flight entertainment, which is fine. You can just download lots of movies on Netflix, Disney Plus on a phone, tablet, etc., um, which was bearable. As you board the flight, they give you a yellow biohazard bag. So it's kind of like a mini flight COVID kit. It has a mask for every two hours for you to change it over to keep it sanitary. And it also has a mini hand sanitizer, gloves and plastic bags to put all of your rubbish in so the cabin crew don't have to touch them. to land they give you the immigration cards as they normally would however when we landed we weren't landing into a official international airport as we came into Darwin we flew into an RAF army base which is where all of the COVID testing is stationed 
so that they're able to do it more efficiently and transfer you to the quarantine hotel. When our flight landed, we literally had to wait on the plane about two and a half hours. And this is just to stop everyone going in groups to get their COVID test. So they take about 20 people at a time. They'll get their test, they'll get onto a bus and then go. So the moment you get off the plane to the moment you get on the bus is a very swift kind of process. And so you do the passport control as you normally would and you get given a little kind of keychain that has a map of the facility, all of your details ready for scanning and then they'll do the normal COVID test, they'll do it for you in your mouth, up the nose and then put in a bag ready to get tested and you'll get the results the next day. After that's done, you get on the bus and they'll take you straight there. And then you go find your room and that's it. Here you are in these four walls for the next two weeks. So after a very long trip, I'm finally here. My ears are borderline bleeding from wearing a mask the whole time, but it's worth it. I'm finally here. I arrived in Darwin, Australia, and I'm at the quarantine hotel. Put in my bag. This is what they look like. They're quite basic, and I do feel like I'm in Jurassic Park a little bit. So this is home for the next two weeks. Let's go and have a look what it's like. It's a bit rainy, but it's so hot at the same time. Right, so this is the quarantine. Hotel. At the quarantine facility that I'm staying at, Howard Springs, we get delivered once a day and that has a hot meal in the evening and breakfast and lunch for the next day. The food's actually quite nice uh, compared to what I thought it was going to be. They provide you with loads of snacks, loads of food, drinks. There's definitely not a shortage. Unfortunately, most of the things I'm having to throw away in the bin, which sucks and you can't even donate it. I'm actually extremely lucky because I've had very friendly neighbours. I've been able to go out there and chat with them whenever I like, obviously, keeping the masks on on the balcony. And we've actually made a little daily routine. We'll get up around eight o'clock, do a morning workout, and it really keeps the spirits high around the accommodation. Um, so that's been really nice. And I've got a family opposite me, so we've just been playing games, um, like just talking across from each other, downloading the apps like Hoot and things like that. But it's really not as bad as I thought it was going to be. The Hotel Quarantine and Ozmat partnered up to call in every day to check on everyone's mental health and to also take your temperature each day. They do actually give you an armband to check on your uh, heart rate and things like that at all times, but that's optional. Like, I hate wearing things on me. I feel restricted, so I just told them I'm not wearing it and they were fine with that. And they've actually been really helpful. The staff have been amazing, super friendly, chatting to you as you walk past. I mean, it can be a bit intimidating with the police walking past sometimes with the army um, behind them, guns on them. It just seems a bit unnecessary, but I guess that's what they've got to do to make sure people are following the rules. And it is an alcohol-free facility. <laughs> so I cannot wait to leave and have a beer. All in all, I would say if you need to come out here, do it. Although the flights are expensive to say the least, it is worth it. You're out here and once you're here, then most of the COVID restrictions are gone. You can enjoy life just like we did a year and a half ago and we took it for granted so much, but it's finally coming to an end. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more travel tips.